I, I think if it hadn't been for uh, Hank Rogers' tenacity, we wouldn't have probably seen Tetris uh, to the scale that we're doing now, you know. Um, I think that um, his tenacity and Alexi's reluctance at the beginning, because Alexi was very reluctant to, to engage with him because he was suspicious of who this guy was, you know. But I think his tenacity and his sort of what makes Hank Rogers Hank Rogers is why we have this. Obviously, you would never have the game without Alexi's brilliant sort of invention. But his persistence in trying to sort of convince Alexi that he was the right guy to partner up with um, and, and their result in friendship, yeah, which lasts to this very day, is why we still have Tetris and why it's so popular and why the game has been so successful. Um, but I think it was that, it, it, the, the, the only reason that happened was because of their friendship and, and how it's carried on through to the modern day. Yeah, one, one of the big challenges when you're doing a true story is to, is to take the script and to go, how, if it's based on, you know, based on real events or real people say, how are we going to make this different from a documentary? How's it going to be entertaining? We're going to, we're going to stay as true as possible to the story, but make it entertaining for an audience. Yeah. Um, and I think that's always the, the big challenge, you know, how to entertain, but still make it believable and, and, tr and true to the actual, you know, to, to, to the real people's story. I think the sort of computer graphic element was was hinted at in the script, but it didn't come, it didn't get fully realised until post production. Yeah, we were under so much pressure to to shoot this because uh, it was during COVID. Yeah, that we really just concentrated on the narrative, right, and telling that story and telling the thriller aspect of the story. And I think a lot of the sort of um, computer graphic style transitions or little chapters and stuff uh, came afterwards when we could really sort of sit down with the effects and start to sort of, you know, start to sort of visualize that, you know, and incorporate characters and different ideas. And there was a lot of different people putting in those ideas. Um, but I think that came after, that came more in post rather than, you know, rather than um, being conscious of that during the shoot. I was, I was very conscious of just not relying on that, but being able to tell the tale and not having to fall back on those kind of more gimmicky sort of um, computer elements, yeah. But I think we've got a right, the, the, the nice balance between the two, you know. Yeah, so the music, we, we always had the idea of playing, you know, some banging sort of 80s tracks in there. So we've got, you know, Final Countdown uh, by Europe. That was part of the actual, that's part of a scene in the, in, and that was a lot of fun to shoot. Yeah. Yeah, it was, that was a great scene and, and, and we love doing that. Um, um, and then we've got a few tracks that have been recorded that are well-known tracks like uh, Blondie's uh, Heart of Glass that was, um, uh, we've done, we've, we've got a, a Russian version of that because it, it was, and we wanted to really sort of play on the minor key for that to when Henk arrives in Russia, so it feels as though there's a big threat and then the lyric would be in Russia as well. So just, we were thinking about that and then we've got a, a version, I've got a Japanese version of Bonnie Tyler's Holding Out for a Hero that was, uh, that was uh, that we use in the car chase uh, near the end as well. So, you know, there, there was there was some of those ideas came before. Some of them came in post. It's just an organic process when you're making a movie. You know, uh, you kind of have to get your main state. You've got you've got to shoot your main part of the film and concentrate on that. And then with the music, you know, we, we had a great composer called Lorne Lauren Balf who did a, a, a really interesting sort of 80 synth track yeah 80s synth score but also used a lot of the actual tetris theme uh, as the, the the basis for the score but not in a very obvious way and the only t the first time you actually hear what people recognize as the tetris theme um uh, which is a a russian folk song called korobaneki yeah um that is what the tetris theme is actually you know made of da -da 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 um, the only time you hear it in full is is at the end of the film during the chase when Valentine's trying to chase uh, Hank onto the plane. It was like a Hansel and Gretel trail that we that we seeded throughout the score from the beginning, and then we sort of paid off. So it was almost like I kind of recognised that, and then okay, it delivered. 
we wanted to put in more of a thriller sort of chase uh, at the end, you know, to pay off. So, so we worked a lot in the end with Noah um, and, you know, bits and pieces throughout there. And myself and Noah sort of worked very closely together for, it was almost a year before we went into, into production because we're always getting held up with COVID and with financing and the script wasn't quite right for the financers to, to sign off on. So we, we worked really, we had a very cro close, you know, we had a great close working relationship. I hope people have a fun ride, uh, you know, with, with this film. I hope they're, I hope they're kind of educated in, in the history of it. Uh, obviously, I hope they enjoy the thriller aspect of it with, you know, with the KGB and with Robert Maxwell. I hope they see the humour in it because there are some great funny moments, particularly with, with Toby Jones, who is one of the funniest actors I've ever worked with. He's, he's, he's got a great um, part there in Robert Stein. Um, and with Anthony Boyle, who plays Kevin Maxwell, they've got a really great little duo going on there. That's probably where a lot of the comedy comes from. Um, but, you know, it is heart. It's a story about family and, and it's about friendship. Uh, and I think more so than anything else about being about a game or being about a time in history, that's really what the film was about, you know? So I hope people have uh, a, 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 an uplifting feeling at the end because it is an uplifting film and it's a, you know, it's a success story uh, between these two very unlikely characters.